It's time that I play the bad guy, the Defender 90 V8 Carpathian Edition, all blacked out, the same type of Defender you saw in the James Bond film, that's this one right here. 518 horsepower, wicked loud exhaust, all black everything, and of course, all the off-road capability, or at least most of it, that you'll find in a regular Defender. We gotta go drive this thing, it is like nothing else. If you wanna sell your car, don't go anywhere else. Sell it online with CarGurus. Get a free quote from thousands of dealers nationwide, and if you like the price, they pick it up and they pay you. The Defender has been out since the 2020 model year. It's the rebirth of the original Defender that's been built since the 1970s. Here's a picture of me in Iceland with the original. Now that was a brand new vehicle in 2015, diesel, manual, metal floors, hardly any insulation. The modern day Defender, whether it's big, small, or extra large, is a true luxury vehicle. Of all the variants, the Shorty Defender is my favorite. That's the 90. There's not too many short wheelbase, short length, two-door SUVs out there. The Jeep Wrangler and the Ford Bronco are the only other alternatives. And nothing quite looks like this. The Defender is that classic look. There's nothing else you can say about it because it's all truck. The short overhangs. This one has the giant 22-inch wheels because this is really the Beverly Hills edition. It does not belong on the backwoods. It can still hang, but that's really where this vehicle goes. All the really fun design touches, like say this metal stamping on the hood, that's just the effect. The old Defenders, you actually could sit on the hood because you had to go on the roof. There's also ladders you can get for this. So many different custom mods available straight from the factory. And straight from the factory, it's so, so capable. With the Defender, you roll the numbers. You want four, six, or eight cylinders. Do you want the 90? Do you want the 110 or the 130? Today, I've got the shortest Defender with the biggest engine. This is the Carpathian edition, so it's all blacked out and extra special, but it's a Defender V8. That's a new trim for 2023. And let's face it, this is the last time you're gonna see this engine in a truck like this, or any Jaguar Land Rover product for that matter. Supercharged, five liter V8, 518 horsepower. Check out those specs. Don't look at the fuel economy numbers because if you're buying this, you don't really care. Now look at the four and the six cylinder engines. In my preference in driving these Defenders, the six cylinder with that mild hybrid 48 volt assist, that's your best choice. Check out the horsepower, 395, it's plenty. But the V8, yeah, it's overkill, but it's the one you really want. The great thing about a Defender is how easy it is to see out of. Giant glass here and up top. Those are called the Alpine lights. Very classic look. From outside, it's so square, it's so flat. Even back here, you get the four individual tail lights. There's no reason to have these auxiliary lights on the fenders. That's just how the old one looked with the old bulbs. That's what you get. Giant exhaust tips. Those will probably get scraped off road. So keep it on road, keep the shiny side up. That's where this thing belongs. The tailgate of the Defender is a door. A big one. And back here, not too much cargo space. It's decent when you fold the seats down, but the nice thing is, is that back here, I can drop the air suspension with a button here. I can also raise it. It's really cool. And there's nothing else quite like this. The G-Wagon, that's the only other one. The Defender 90 has a usable back seat, and it's really airy. You get glass up here, here, and here. It's like a safari back here, plus heated seats on this model, a separate climate zone. But beyond all this, it's just the room that strikes me. I like that. The Defender is the only two-door SUV that can seat six. So instead of having this refrigerator, you can turn this into a jump seat. That's pretty cool. Compared to what you'll find in a Range Rover, the Defender is very barren inside. It's functional. All these exposed screws, all the textures. It's meant to last and be very durable, but it's not that supple, even if you get the optional Windsor leather. On the Carpathian Edition, you get lots of Alcantara. It's very nice to the touch, but nothing in here truly screams luxury. Considering the price of this Defender, it's not all that nice in here. Upscale Wrangler, yes. Downmarket G-Wagon, also yes. Or maybe I just don't get it. Pivi Pro, that's what Jaguar Land Rover calls its newest infotainment system. And beyond the looks, which I like, the best thing is that it hasn't broken yet. Usually in the weeks that I have a Jaguar or a Land Rover vehicle, something happens, not this time, not yet. So that's impressive as it is. Now on the Defender, you get things like weight sensing. It actually will show you when the water is over the doors. Very helpful. 
You can also look at all the different terrain response systems. For example, if you use the info here, you can configure it as well. That's what that was. You have several different paragraphs so you can really read without going into the owner's manual. Plus you can see everything. 4x4i shows you the height of the suspension, whether the differentials are locks, the altitude, the pitch, the angle, all that fun stuff. And this whole screen is 11.4 inches. This is not included on the lower trims. That one gets a standard 10 inch screen that's a little slimmer. It fits between these two tops of the dash and the bottom here, but overall it looks pretty good. The climate controls are pretty intuitive. When you turn them on, you got the temperature readout here. When you push each dial, that goes for the heating, go the other way, you get cooling. Kind of eliminates the need for other buttons. That's pretty smart. You can also control your fan with this one over here. Press this one. This dial will do the different driving modes and you can also use the touchscreen for that. Air suspension, always helpful. And right here, that is an electrically heated windshield. Not just a defroster on the windshield wipers, it's not a de-icer, the entire windshield has tiny little filaments running vertically. You won't find that in other vehicles, but Jaguar and Land Rovers have them. The digital instrument panel is also reserved for upper trims. I like this better than the analog gauges and the way that other screen kind of cuts between the two. Not only is it really clear, you can actually change the layout, which is kind of cool. I can go to a one dial system. You can also see full screen maps. You can adjust your head up display here as well. And you can see the driver assistance. Now there's no semi automated function like you'll find in some of the other newest Land Rovers and Range Rovers. That's because this vehicle does not have those systems and that's okay because this is fun to drive with your actual hands. This is the last time you're gonna see Land Rover and Jaguar's giant V8. It's just, it's epic. <laughs> it truly is. They put this V8 in everything from the top of the line Range Rover to the F-Type. And now they've squeezed it in the little Defender. And what's crazy is that this is the two-door version. Yes, you can get the Defender V8 in the longer four-door 110, but in this short wheelbase truck, it's just like you can, it's like a lifted muscle car. Of course, there's an active exhaust. Of course, there's a supercharger. There's no hybrid assist. This is old school, premium gas, eight miles to the gallon if you're really going for it. Zero to 60, car and driver has reported it 4.4 seconds. And this thing weighs over 5,000 pounds, even in the short wheelbase form. But it's so responsive. You never forget that you're in a big truck, but then you kind of do, because the stability at higher speeds is always there. You can't do that in a Mercedes G63. Even the new one is just gonna wobble. This thing is planted. And there's absolutely no reason to be doing 150 miles an hour in a Land Rover Defender, but you can do that. I'm not saying do it, but you can. What you'll find on these V8 models is a dynamic mode that firms up the springs just a little bit more, quickens the reaction time. There's all the other off-road driving modes. Yes, there's a low range. We'll get to that in a little bit. But on-road, this thing just decimates everything. On this model of the Defender, Land Rover didn't just stuff the V8 and call it a day. They could have, but then you'd have a situation like the Wrangler 392, which is simply out of control. Watch my video to find out how. <laughs> but here, they've changed so many things underneath the truck. You have stiffer front and rear anti-roll bars. The suspension link bushings are also changed. The air springs are firmer, as are the dampers, even the steering. So as a whole, the V8 version is dramatically different on road than when you'll find in other six cylinder or the four cylinder Defenders. The Defender 90 V8 sits in a very small class of trucks. 
already mentioned, Mercedes G63, Jeep Wrangler 392, and you can also count the Ford Bronco Raptor. These are all very extreme off-road vehicles with big engines, tons of power, too much power for their own good, and very big price tags. This is the only one, though, that you can get as a two-door with a V8. There's nothing else like this Defender 90 anywhere. Gosh, this car is just so much fun. I'm calling it a car, not a truck, because that's what it feels like. I'm telling you, the two-door feels so much more nimble than the four-door. I've driven that one, the V8 version, just like this. Reduced mass, for sure. The weight distribution is roughly even front to rear. The tires are big. I mean, it's impressive with how well it drives. It shouldn't drive this well, <laughs> but it does. It outdrives everything else in the class. There are Brembos on the front of this truck, and they work. Man, does your head go back. Because this is a Land Rover, driving off-road is very simple. Terrain Response 2 is the latest version of what is a point-and-click system. Every other SUV has copied it. You've seen mountain icons, grass, gravel, snow, right, mud ruts. It's all because of Land Rover. They developed it first. And what it is is just a great software combination. So it changes the torque distribution, the throttle sensitivity, the shift mapping, the height of the air suspension, the locking of the diffs. This means you don't have to do anything, but just choose. And there's also an automatic setting that will adapt on the fly, but it's just so easy to go in here on the screen and just change it all. This Defender 90 really is just a posh Jeep. It truly is. It feels nice and narrow. It's nimble. The visibility is fantastic, but you're just way more comfortable inside. Land Rover takes 360 cameras to the next level. So not only do I see a full render of the vehicle from the outside, when you hit off-road, the parking sensors are disabled. Now I see either side of the wheels that's very helpful. Even better, seeing underneath the hood. The camera angles are just so wide and the software is so good that it can project a bigger image than what you could normally get on the front camera. So you don't really need a spotter in a lot of everyday situations. Now up here, I'm gonna come to a full stop because this is a water crossing. And even though the vehicle is pretty much well equipped, the tires are not. So ordinarily, we like to cross a small river here. It's not a big deal, but these are street tires. They're not the all-terrain. So as great as any 4x4 is, you're entirely limited by the tires. It's never a smart thing to just think, hey, I can do whatever I want. You don't have the right tires. You're not driving on the right road. Simple as that. The 2023 Defender starts at 53,500. That's the really basic version with steelies and cloth seats. A base Defender 90 costs 55,100. Between 60 and 70 grand, you can get a Defender with a lot of options. Of course, mine has them all. $116,475. This is between two and only two high performance off-road SUVs with huge V8s. The Jeep Wrangler 392, which is in the low 80s, and the Mercedes G63 in the 180s. The Ford Bronco Raptor, that's another choice, but it only comes with a V6 and it's much slower. Land Rover Defenders like this are statement pieces, but this one has the bones. It's got the V8, it's got real on-road performance, most of the off-road performance if you equip it well with the right tires, and the looks, the looks are to kill. Absolutely love this thing. Now let's face it, Land Rover in terms of reliability is horrible. You're never gonna wanna keep this car past the warranty period, but guess what? While you have it, and if you have the money, these things are just terrific cars. So what do you think? Wanna see more reviews of SUVs? We got them. Go to cargurus.com, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and we'll see you next time.